Maritime Made is presented by Nova Scotia Business Inc. Helping to educate, inform, and celebrate our region's manufacturing successes. Because great things are happening in all of our communities. In the Annapolis Valley of Nova Scotia, you'll find some of the best apple orchards in all of North America. Almost 25,000 metric tons of apples were produced in Nova Scotia in 2018. Apple farming is big business. At the fifth generation Lutz family farm, you'll find farmers Janice and Larry Lutz, along with their family and workers, running a big operation. Storms aside, climatic conditions for apple growing here are spot on in Nova Scotia. Apple trees actually need winter. They need to be cold and dormant for a period of time, followed by warmer weather in order to bloom. In the spring, the first growth is the leaves. The blooms follow roughly three to four weeks later. For pollination, the trees need bees, and bees need warm, mild days without too much rain so that they can fly. Once pollinated, the apples need a combination of sun and rain for optimal growth throughout the summer months. By the time fall hits, the warm days and the cool nights help apples ripen and turn red. Planting an apple orchard begins with rootstock. Rootstock enables apple farmers to create trees that focus most of their energy on apple creation, with less energy going towards growing deep, strong roots. Rootstock is planted in the spring, but first, the soil is prepared. Later in the summer, when the rootstock is growing well, it's time to turn the rootstock into an apple tree. The farmer cuts a bit of bark off the stem in a crisscross shape. Then a bud is sliced off an older apple tree. This apple tree bud is tucked inside the bark on the stem and elastic holds them together. With the surface of the bud touching the surface of the stem, the two will grow tightly together into an apple tree. This process of getting the bud of one tree to grow on rootstock is called grafting. These new trees will stay here in the nursery section of the farm for a few years while they continue to grow until they're about four feet tall. The farmers don't want these young trees to bear fruit at this stage. The trees need to put their energy into growing healthy branches and leaves first. By the fourth year, the trees are ready to be planted and go into full fruit production. The trees are moved to an orchard and planted exactly three feet apart. Because the roots are not as strong as a traditional wild apple tree, they're supported with poles and wires. As they continue to grow, they'll be tied to wire along each row. There's an anchor wired to the end post to hold it all in place, similar to grapevines. Each spring, these production apple trees bloom. Beekeepers deliver beehives to the orchards and the bees get busy pollinating the apple blossoms. After pollination, and as the blooms continue to mature, the petals fall off and the apples start to grow. There are so many blossoms on the trees that the farmers need to manage what blossoms will grow into full-size apples. The largest one in each cluster is kept and the rest get pruned or fall off. By getting rid of so many tiny apples, there is more room for fewer, bigger apples that can be grown to very high quality and consistency standards. Having the apples less crowded on the trees also helps with air circulation, pests, and other damage. After pruning, the apple trees need to be fertilized for the growing season. How much fertilizer, when and where, are all determined by soil and leaf lab tests. The results of testing indicate if anything essential is lacking. Unfortunately, humans aren't the only ones who love apples. Insects do too. At certain times of the year, after evidence-based testing in the orchards to determine what pests are causing damage to the crop, pesticides will be used. Application is always at night to protect the helpful insects like bees. The orchards are sprayed using as little pesticides as possible to treat the problem. There is a fan on back of the sprayer that sends a mix of water and spray through the air. In the fall, 
the harvest begins. Different varieties of apples ripen at different times. Growing multiple varieties helps to manage the workload during the harvest. The Lutz Family Farm grows Sunrise, Sweet Tango, Ginger Gold, Macintosh, Cortland, Honeycrisp, Northern Spy, Golden Delicious, Red Delicious, Ambrosia, Sonia, and Jonna Gold. To harvest the apples, the workers use a non-slip ladder and wear a picking basket. The apples are each hand-picked and placed in the basket. The harvest workers are checking each apple carefully for any bug bites and making sure each apple is at least 50% red and it's the right size. If the stem is long, it's pruned to prevent it from breaking the skin of another apple in the basket. Every apple is handled gently so it doesn't bruise. These apples are sweet tango. They're pretty delicious. From the picking baskets, the apples go into large wooden bins that are loaded on the back of a trailer. Once all the bins are full, they're taken to be loaded for delivery. The heavy bins are gently unloaded along a conveyor. Each bin is labeled with the date, the apple variety, and the orchard it came from. Then it gets loaded onto the back of the delivery truck. About 44 crates of apples fit on this truck. Straps hold the crates on the truck, and they're well tightened. These apples are being delivered to the Scotian Gold Farmer-Owned Cooperative. By working together to create this cooperative, the farmers have created a high-tech sorting, grading, washing, and packaging facility. The process at Scotian Gold has many steps to ensure each apple meets quality standards, including photo inspection, where each apple is photographed 200 times to meet spec. The apples from all the farms in Nova Scotia are stored here until it's time to be packaged and shipped to stores. Nova Scotia apples are exported to the United States, with a small portion going to the United Kingdom, France, and Cuba. <laughs>